All right, folks. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at this book. It's the Roth Hamill's Antenna book. Uh, what happened was, is I was on a live stream and with Coffee and Ham Radios, and I was showing this book because we were looking at a certain type of antenna. And everybody was like, well, why don't you do a video on that book? And uh, I really was reluctant to do that, but it seems it's something that uh, everybody wanted. So here we are. Um, just talking about this, this is the 13th edition of this antenna book, and it was originally written back in 1950. So it's been around for a while and it's gone through uh, a few uh, revisions. It's 1600 pages. And from what I can tell, it's the most complete collection of antenna information in one spot that, uh, that I could find. If you have another one or an alternative, uh, go ahead and post it below and I'd love to check it out. But uh, in all the time that this book has been around, this is the first time it's been available in English format. So it was kind of a big deal. And when I heard about it, I went ahead and ordered it. And I'll have a link to the website below. And uh, you can pick this up for around 60 euro. You have to have it shipped uh, from overseas via DHL and about 20 euro uh, in shipping. So it's going to be around 85 bucks or something like that. I thought that I had paid more than that for this book, but uh, maybe I just have a bad memory. In any event, let's take a quick look at it. Uh, what I did is I just went through and used these post-it notes to mark a couple of different pages that I found interesting anyway, and kind of just use those examples as kind of an explanation or an introduction to the book and why somebody may want to pick up a copy. I'm really glad that I have it, and there isn't an antenna that I've come across that I haven't been able to look up and find out some information in here. Uh, on the back of the book, it says somewhere in here, and you can zoom in if you want, um, that it's written in a kind of a plain language, so it's approachable and accessible to everybody. And while I'll agree that most of the book is written that way, there is a lot of technical information, and a lot of it is actually over my head. But there's plenty of useful information in here, and uh, we'll take a look at some of those examples. So uh, just going into the book, what I wanted to do is... Um, let me go ahead and open it up and pay a little bit of homage to the guys who wrote the book. Um, this is Carl. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce his last name. And I think he is the, oh, it's Rolf Hamill. And he is the, uh, I guess he's the brains of the operation. And down here is, uh, boy, I'll never get this name right. Alois, it looks like. And uh, he is one of the contributors. And you can see how nicely dressed he is. Um, very professional. And then here is another gentleman, Hans. And uh, these guys are some of the contributors uh, to this information. And then when you go through, you can see, uh, looking at the table of content, uh, we call them table of contents here in North America. Um, you can see there's all kinds of different topics like transmission lines. And then down here we have impedance matching networks, balance, and then it starts to get into some of the different types of antennas, long wires, broadbanded antennas. And you can really get a sense of just how much information is in here when you're flipping through this. Let me go ahead and zoom in just a little bit more so that uh, you can see this a little bit easier. So give me one second. There we go. That is probably a little bit better. So let me go to my first, uh, first marker here. And the reason that I highlighted this is I wanted to show that it covers the different, this is terms and communications engineering, but it goes through a lot of different terms and things that you're going to encounter as you go through the different book. Uh, different pages of the book and uh, this is a good primer to help you understand the type of things that you're going to be reading about you have things in here like coordinate systems maxwell's equations uh, over here which is uh, pretty interesting stuff and then here uh, chapter two is around propagation of electromagnetic waves so this is a really good primer on propagation and how propagation works it goes through the atmosphere the different layers of the atmosphere um, how signals will bounce around. Like here's the different uh, layers here called out. And it talks about um, temperature profiles and like you're talking about balloons and stuff like that. Very timely. Um, over here are some charts around the different layers and where they reside in terms of their height above the Earth's surface. Uh, when I go into here, here is the section on transmission lines. And uh, believe it or not, transmission lines are a lot more than just simple coaxial cable uh, in, in twin line. And it goes through different things like characteristic impedance down here. Um, and as you go through, it talks about like velocity factor and how insulation material can uh, impact that. Here's velocity factor here. It talks about attenuation or line loss. So really, really educational just from a transmission line standpoint. Um, as we go through, here's like one of my favorite sections where it talks about balance. 
uh, both voltage and current balance, the differences between the two, when and where you would use them, and, uh, and how you would use them. And so there's just tons of different information in here and uh, some diagrams down here around different balance forms that uh, you can learn about uh, going through the book. Um, I, I put this page in here because I wanted to highlight how useful some of these diagrams are. And what we have here are trapped dipoles, and it shows uh, wave characteristics as how the wave would uh, be affected by the size of your trapped dipole and then also the types of traps that you would use. And I found that to be pretty interesting uh, reading. And here's something I wanted to show. At the end of every chapter, you have a, a short summary, and then you have all of these references here. And that's really handy if you wanted to go through and cross-check or get more information or a deeper dive on anything that was presented in that chapter. And as you can see, the references are very complete and detailed, which is, uh, which is awesome when you look at reference material like this. <clears throat> now, I wanted to, I was mentioning earlier about the different types of antennas that um, this book has, and it has every kind. So we, again, on a different live stream, we had, um, the F Michael from Flex Radio on, and we were joking around about just different, you know, apartment antennas and things like that. And he brought up this concept of this isotron antenna. So we looked it up online, pulled it up, and sure enough, the isotron antenna is covered here. And not that I'm a big fan of isotron antennas, but um, you can come through here and you can get different uh, tables with data in there. Here's some more pictures of the isotron antenna. And what's really handy about this book is that if you were going to embark on building an antenna, this is a really good cookbook or recipe book for, for building antennas and all the things that you would need to consider. And even for eclectic, and that's what I'm going to characterize this one as antennas like this isotron. I just found that to be really interesting. Here is a section on directional antennas, uh, Mosley beam antennas and Yagi's. And here's information about what this antenna would look like. And for a sizing standpoint, uh, you can see all the different directors and reflectors and and things along those lines. So again, really, really good information. Uh, flipping this over, let's see what this one was. Oh, ground planes is what I wanted to talk about. So a lot of times with the vertical antennas, one of the things that we're really concerned about are uh, artificial grounding and ground planes to help with reflecting the signal off of the off of the Earth's surface, as opposed by as opposed to having signals absorbed by the Earth's surface. Um, and the way that you build these ground planes is different uh, if your antenna is a vertical above ground or if it's a ground mounted vertical. And uh, here are a whole bunch of different examples and things that you need to consider. And it talks about how you can um, use capacitance and reactance and inductance to change the length or the size of your radial plane, uh, depending upon the installation location. Really, really cool stuff. And like, this is probably the oddest antenna that I've ever seen. But uh, so I just I just marked it all for that. Let's keep going and uh, see what I marked here. It has a whole section on um, masts and how you can use different masts, and it talks about like portable installations. And so it covers things like here is a uh, tire mount that you kind of flagpole antenna. I think is what this is, or flagpole mount that you uh, actually park your car on. You put underneath your tire to help hold it into place. And then here's an example of an installation, uh, and this is with a, um, it's, it's, not a, it's not a trapped, a linked, a linked end fed, and it gives you different lengths of measurements and stuff like that. And it covers, like here's dipole antennas, for example, and it would cover how you would mount that in portable installations. It also shows, here's a vertical antenna with your ground plane. Uh, you have a transformer down here, and like up here you have some different, looks like traps that are in here. And how you could mount this at your at your home QTH where your ham shack is, uh, and I thought that that was really really cool. And then when you talk about some of these vertical antennas that folks use, require some sophisticated matching networks at the feed point, and uh, it goes over that as well. And I included this because we like to talk about Smith charts, and there's a whole section here on working with Smith charts and how you would use them to build your antenna, tune your antenna, and then make sure that your antenna is working in the best possible way. As a section, as I mentioned, uh, around if you're building antennas and you needed some sort of recipe book or cookbook, um, here is practical antenna constructions and it covers materials and different types of materials like metal, for example. Um, down here, one of the types of metals, it covers a stainless steel and then aluminum and things along those lines. 
um, here's brass and then plastics uh, down here. So again, it, it covers just about every aspect that you would uh, that you would need or want to know about. Uh, here's more detail around the section for push-up masts, and it talks about pros and cons, diameters, thickness, strength, um, things like that around when you're going to build your antenna that you would need to consider. So it helps you determine what would be the appropriate antenna for the uh, or appropriate mast for the antenna that you're putting up. So, for example, if you're going to put up like a Moxon or, or a hex beam or something like that, a directional antenna, the considerations that you would need to make when choosing a mast versus if you were going to use your mast for a dipole or like a wire antenna, for example. And there's a whole section here on everybody's favorite topic, lightning protection grounding and surge protection. Um, again, there I don't think there's a topic around antennas or an antenna type that you can't find in this book and, and get information on and become a little bit better educated. Uh, flipping in the back, it also covers tons of different um, pieces of, you know, I guess I got a piece of something stuck in there, um, computer software that you use when designing antennas. And it talks about commercials, the differences between commercial software and shareware. And it gives a lot of different working examples of the different different types of software that you want to use. So, for example, here is a program called Elsie that I've used, um, <clears throat> and you use this for designing impedance matching networks, for example, or different circuits that you would put in line for your antenna for different reasons. Uh, again, really helpful stuff. And as we're getting down to the back, it has all of these different data tables or lookup tables with different types of information. Like here's SDR channels, for example. Um, and then here's free net channels. But what I found kind of funny is it has a whole section here on CB radio antennas. If you wanted to get down, um, you could you could come in here and find out where you wanted to uh, transmit, for example. But this is also handy if you're going to build, like say you were building an antenna for CB or something like that. You can come in here and you can get your frequencies and then uh, build to those specifications using some of the other techniques in the book. And then go out there and test that out. But I think that's uh, really going to wrap it up. I didn't want to go into over detail around it. Um, really happy with the book. I don't care if you buy it or not, but uh, what I would say is that if you're looking for some good reference material to keep on your bookshelf and to learn a lot about antennas, this might be something you wanted to pick up. Anyhow, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. I want to say thanks to everybody for watching and uh, thanks uh, to Roth Hamels for putting this out in an English version. Thanks for watching, everybody.